Hello everybody and welcome back to the Mercer Falconry YouTube channel. In this video I will be introducing you to the birds. Maybe you may have seen from the title that I was splitting this video up. And that's because I have a set of birds that live free lofted in aviaries and I have a set of birds that live in something called a weathering. So these are the birds that you'll see me put on the lawn for bath every morning. For part one of this video I will be introducing you to the aviary birds. And this includes Sway, Kit, Wilbur and Igor. Sway, Kit and Wilbur were actually raised by me by hand from a very young age, which means that they are imprinted on me, so they can get quite chatty whilst we are around the aviaries. However, once we get out into the field where they do their flying, they tend to quieten down. And I will be going into too much detail about each of the birds in this video, this is just a brief introduction to each of them, so let's get into it! <laughs> So this is Kit, and she is uh, my three-year-old barn owl. I thought we'd start off with Kit because she was the first bird that I got as part of Mercer Falconry. I got Kit at a week old, and I raised her myself. That means that she's imprinted, which means that she sees me as mum owl. Now, as you might notice, Kit is not a common barn owl. We have common barn owls wild here in the UK, and they're very recognisable for their lovely white facial cone, their white chest, and the lovely white brown colours on their back. Kit, however, she's got this brown facial cone, this lovely toffee colour on her chest, and these lovely silver colours along her back. Will you be careful with some food, please? There are lots of different types of barn owl and they come in lots of different colours, however they all have this lovely striking feature which is that round facial cone. And that acts like a satellite dish and it funnels all the sound to their ears at the side of their head. Like us, they have one ear on each side of their head, and so when a noise happens somewhere it hits one ear slightly before the other. That's how the barn owls can work out the direction of the sound. However, barn owls have got asymmetric hearing, meaning one ear is even higher up than the other ear, and that allows them to look at the height of the sound. And this is how the barn owls hunt. What they will do is they'll fly up and down a field, looking out for their prey, and this is called quarter in the ground. When they hear a noise, they will hover above it, the barn owls can hover like a kestrel, and pinpoint exactly where that noise is coming from. They will then dive down and throw their feet right into the long grass and grab their prey. And so something different about the barn owls to all the other owls is that barn owls have got bald feet. Most owls have got feathers going all the way down to their talons. However, because the way that the barn owls hunt, they need bald feet, otherwise it will just wreck the feathers. I've got some exciting plans for Kit in the future that involves getting a speaker with a recording of a sound that she is trained to fly to and hiding it in the long grass in the field and getting her to go and find it. So we should be able to see a barn owl hunting as they would in the wild. Keep tuned for future videos to see how that goes. So this is Sway and he is a male Eurasian eagle owl. We got Sway a week old and he is now nine months old and we hand raised him so he is imprinted on us. He has these lovely big ear tufts and they're used for communication. You can see right now they're stuck up which means he's happy and relaxed. If they go flat to the back of his head then that's a warning sign that we should leave him alone. Sway has also got these beautiful big eyes which are the most striking features of his. And then he's got this beautiful plumage of light and dark feathers all mottled in together along his chest. Which means even though he is one of the largest species of owl in the world, if he wanted to sit in a tree, he really could vanish. You're so noisy, Sway. Now look at the camera. Look at the camera. I haven't got any food. So this is Wilbur and he is a male yellow-billed kite. Wilbur is a year and a half old, and like with Kit and Sway, I got him at just under a week old and raised him by hand, so he's imprinted on me. So you might wonder why he's got a black beak, even though he's called a yellow-billed kite, and that's because of his age. Now the juvenile kites will have a full black beak, and they've also got a different plumage to the adult kites. So the younger kites will have much lighter feathers mottled through, and then the older kites will have this lovely deep brown colour all the way over. And they don't get that striking yellow beak until they mature. So Wilbur is a sub-adult, so he's halfway there. So you can see he's starting to grow the bits of yellow, but it's not fully yellow yet. Kites have the incredible ability to feed on the wing. What that means is that they will fly around and catch insects with their feet in the air and then move it to their mouth and eat it while still flying around. They never have to land. So to demonstrate this in captivity, 
The way the kites are often flown is that people will throw bits of beef up in the air or catapult pieces of food up in the air and allow the kites to catch them whilst flying around and eat them for the display. Wilbur, however, Wilbur skipped his PE lessons because he cannot catch. I have tried chicken, I've tried beef, I've tried quail, rabbit, I've tried all sorts of different sizes of food. If it's too small, he just ignores it. If it's too big, he does sometimes catch it, but he then goes and throws it at me. So, we gave up on that idea, and now I just let Wilbur do what he likes. This is Igor, and he is a Eurasian Kestrel. Igor is four years old, but I got him from a friend earlier this year. And Igor is a male Kestrel, and we could tell that he's a male Kestrel because the female and male Kestrels have a different plumage. This is something that we call sexual dimorphism. And so the males will have this lovely grey-blue colour on their head and their tail, and then this lovely brown and black colours on their back, whereas the females have these brown colours all over their body. Kestrels are a type of falcon, and so they've got a really characteristic look whilst in the air of a drawn bow. They've got these long pointed wings and a nice long tail, and kestrels are really easy to identify here in the UK because you'll often see them hovering at the side of the road. Now, kestrels have a very similar way of hunting to the barn owl, however they use a different scent. Whereas the barn owl uses that facial cone and their hearing to locate their prey, the kestrels have incredible eyesight. So when they're hovering above a field, what they're doing is they're looking around for their prey. When they see a prey, they will fold away these long pointed wings, dive down into the ground and throw their feet in to grab the prey. As I haven't had Igor for very long, I am looking forward to getting to know his personality and training him a bit more, and hopefully we can show that throughout videos in the future. You're a mess. Couldn't you have had a bath before? Will you be quiet if you just food? So there we go, that is the four Avery birds, and I do apologise that I was having to talk over some of them, but they are animals and I can't ask them to be quiet. Even though that was just a brief introduction into each of the birds, there will be plenty of flying videos in the future. So leave a comment below about which bird you would like to see some flying of. Do all the YouTube bits as well. That's all for this video, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe.